I speak for a man who gave for this land Took a bullet in the back for his pay Spilled his blood in the dirt and the dust And he's come back to say That what he has seen is hard to believe And it does no good to just pray Oh, he asks of us to stand and we must in this war today. Now, Mr. President, today we're faced with the most solemn decision a lawmaker can make, whether or not to authorize the use of military force. Voting for a course of action that will send young Americans off to fight and die for their country is the most solemn responsibility every member of this Congress will undertake. We need to approach this issue as if we are sending our very own children to war. When he puts on that uniform, he's my baby. And I have fear. This is probably the hardest decision I've ever had to make. The great debate we begin today represents the opening act of a drama that promises to define the 21st century. My hands tremble. But my heart still throbs. I read this quote. Naturally, the common people don't want war. But after all, it is the leaders of a country who determine the policy. And it is always a simple matter to drag the people along. Whether it is a democracy or a fascist dictatorship or a parliament or a communist dictatorship, the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders. That is easy. All you have to do is tell them they're being attacked and denounce the pacifist for a lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger. It works the same in every country. Herman Goering, president of the Reichstag Nazi parliament, 1934. Here it is. That is massive. When I made the phone call on September 13th, it was because I saw the pictures of him standing on top of the pile saying that we were going to smoke the evildoers out that did this to us, and we were going to find them in their caves. But uh, if it weren't for this, I wouldn't have joined the Army, which means I wouldn't have gone home on Christmas leave to go to a bar to meet Bree. All that had to happen so I could fly 10,000 miles away to not shoot around because all I saw were women and children running away from gunfire before I took a bullet myself. Tonight I want to take a few minutes to discuss a grave threat to peace. The threat comes from Iraq. Based on intelligence, we have a very frightening picture of Iraq's capabilities. We've all had those briefings. I had the most recent briefing just this afternoon. If I had not been one who was given intelligence briefings, I may well have opposed this resolution. Dick Cheney, Colin Powell, Don Rumsfeld, Condoleezza Rice, brilliant people all. We look at the vice president. We look at the secretary of state. We look at the secretary of defense. This is as glittering an array of talent 
as any president has ever assembled to advise him on foreign policy matters. Indeed, I believe they have a plan. Mr. Allard. Aye. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Baucus. Aye. It was April 4th, 2004, and I took a shot right above the left collarbone. After I spent time in a field hospital in Kuwait, Lonstel, Germany Air Base, Walter Reed, as well as a rehab hospital in St. Louis, I finally made it home to Kansas City, Missouri on July 16, 2004. This is cookcollege.com, and it's for learning about life in a wheelchair. But my favorite part's the message board. If something I haven't experienced with Thomas is going on, like right now I'm used bowel pro problems. <laughs> I posted that and it says, the problem is Thomas is having accidental bowel movements every four to six hours, it seems. He is very concerned for upcoming wedding and events. And on the day of the wedding, he's terribly worried about having an accident while he's in his tux. He is starting to get very excited about our wedding and it would break my heart if he had to experience something like that on such an important day. Please help us. The threat posed by Iraq grows with each passing day. Mr. By, aye. It's a danger that grows every day. Mr. Bennett, aye. Each day that goes by, he becomes more dangerous, more diabolical. Every day, Saddam Hussein grows stronger. His capabilities become better. Mr. Biden, aye. Every day, Saddam Hussein builds more chemical and biological weapons. And the longer we wait, the more dangerous he becomes. Mr. Bond, aye. Mr. Bro, aye. Mr. Brownback, aye. Mr. Bunny, aye. Mr. Byrne, aye. Mr. Campbell, aye. Ms. Cantwell, aye. Mrs. Carney, aye. Mr. Carper. Aye. 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 Wait! Slow down. Don't rush this through. The rush to say to the president, go it alone. Don't worry about anybody else. I think it's hurting this debate, and I think that this debate looks political. Three weeks before election seems to be an odd time to be authorizing war. I urge you to oppose this rush to war. It is morally wrong, financially irresponsible, and it's not in our national security interest. We have options, and we have an obligation to pursue them. Let's see, I put Timmy and Lisa here so they can be close to your mom. I think I would be stupid not to question myself to say, could I handle this? But he's very charming, and he's very caring, and I told him when he was in rehab in St. Louis, I just told him that I was going to marry him. I didn't ask him. I just thought he should know. You got, like, boobage showing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tie in or out? Okay. In. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> With this ring, I thee wed and pledge my faithful love. With this ring, I thee wed and pledge my faithful love. I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Young. Damn your big dress. I know. I'm sorry. Bravo. Yay! Thomas, I'm just getting to know you, but thank God you're a liberal. <laughs> I got a couple words to say. I heard that uh, thank God you're a liberal thing. I had to say something. <laughs> and, uh, well, I'm Thomas's little brother, and me and him have been through a lot together. And, uh, Bree, I'd like to welcome you to the family. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you. And uh, here's to you two and your future endeavors. I'd like to say something 
I'm proud of my brother Thomas for going in the army and being brave and going in Iraq. Is that all? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> they will be dancing in the streets, waving American flags. No, this job in Iraq will be easier than what happened in Afghanistan. Mr. Cleland. Aye. Mrs. Clinton. Aye. Mr. Cochran. Aye. Mr. President, what happened to Osama bin Laden? Do we know how long a war in Iraq would last? Has there been any assessment for the American people of how much a war in Iraq will cost our economy? Do you have any idea of the human loss we should expect? I will remind members to address their remarks to the chair and not to the president. Dude, I ain't never having a wedding at my house again. This is it. My middle son, Nathan, is also in the service. He will be going to Iraq as convoy security. You got to know, way down deep inside, I'm so proud of you. And I think you're an amazing young man. And what you're doing is so honorable and so noble. I just hope that you've had as much training as you think you've had. Oh, I've had Because when Thomas got over there, he thought he was trained. And it was not what he thought. But you it gotta was remember, Thomas's unit never went to Iraq. My unit's been to Iraq once and they right. didn't know. And that a is you're person. right, that is different. But at the same time, I hate to see you go. For a year, I will worry. I will worry. I will worry. When Thomas came home from rehab, he was obviously focused on gaining as much independence as he could. All right, go over and spot me. But that doesn't spot give your life purpose. Yeah. And so he felt pretty useless for a long time. He didn't get out of bed. He played PlayStation, watched movies, listened to music, read magazines. And right. he would watch the news, listen to Bush and Rumsfeld and everyone, and get so upset about all the lies that they were telling. And I really think that it was about the time that Cindy Sheehan was in Crawford that he realized it was important for him to speak out. The focus turned to one mother's grief. He's on vacation here for five weeks. That's your buddy. She's there because she's our voice. Yeah, she's your voice, not my voice. <laughs> You know, when I meant our, I meant mothers of children who are in Iraq. My husband's very right-wing, a very conservative Republican ditto head. She says she wants to talk to the president. He believes in Rush Limbaugh and Bill O'Reilly and, God forbid, Hannity. And he's, he's very pro-Bush. He thinks Bush is wonderful. Yeah, he's a president. He doesn't need to talk to a woman that is given way out there on the fringe. That is given everything for this country. She, she didn't give anything. Her, her son, son did. That's she right. gave her son. We've been talking about Cindy Sheehan. She'll join us here in the Situation Room to tell us what she wants to say to the president right now. Plus, a tropical storm expected to become a hurricane. Many of us who have been silent far too long have begun to get behind these women being led by Cindy Sheehan. Before I joined the military, I was politically minded, but not necessarily politically active. I only became politically active once I had joined an organization called the Iraq Veterans Against the War. Momentarily, we're going to speak with Thomas Young, a 25-year-old uh, disabled Iraqi war vet. He's here on his honeymoon. I can no longer control my body temperature. And when I go outside in the heat, I have to wear a cooling jacket that has frozen gel inserts to uh, keep my body temperature regulated and cooled. 
They tell me the feeling dizzy after warm days and all this will go away eventually once I get used to my injury. God, I hope they tell him the truth. Hi, nice to meet y'all. I'm Thomas Young. Nice to meet you. Thomas, by the way. Hey, you've got time to do an interview? I called my recruiter on uh, September 13th. I wanted to go to Afghanistan. And I only managed to spend maybe five days in Iraq until I got picked to go on uh, my first mission. There were 25 of us crammed into the back of a uh, two and a half ton truck with no covering on top or uh, armor on the sides. For the Iraqis on the top of the roof, it just looked like, you know, ducks in a barrel. Yeah. They didn't even have to aim. So when you're asked to fight a war that's over nothing, I've got meetings, I guess. I'm a busy man. We're coming, we're coming. I'd also want to introduce Thomas Young. He was fighting in Sadr City and wounded the same day Casey was killed. And he was part of the 1st Cavalry, too. I uh, also would like to demand a meeting with the president because I feel he owes me some explanations as to why a soldier can volunteer to go over and fight for his country. And lose his ability to walk, plus a lot of other uh, important functions, and why it, I am not uh, worth uh, the funding for stem cell research. Sorry, but we're going to have to uh, cut the short. I'm going to go find a table to lean on for support. So are we good here? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We've learned that Iraq has trained al-Qaeda members in bomb making. Saddam Hussein's regime trained al-Qaeda operatives in bomb making. Saddam is now training al-Qaeda in bomb making. We know that Iraq and al-Qaeda have had high level contacts that go back a decade. Senior level contacts between Iraq and al-Qaeda going back a decade. The Iraqi regime has been in contact with al-Qaeda for at least a decade. Saddam Hussein is harboring terrorists. Harbors these terrorists aid comfort and sanctuary to terrorists. We know that Iraq and the Al-Qaeda terrorist ne network share a common enemy, the United States of America. Wonder if the Bushes and the people at Fox News and people like that had a big sigh of relief when the hurricane hit. I know it's a horrible tragedy, they must have said, but thank God we don't have to talk about Cindy. <laughs> My uh, pillbox separates them out for the week. This is carbamazepine. It is a nerve pain medication. Ms. Collins, aye. This is a drug called Coumadin, and it's a blood thinner. Mr. Craig, aye. This is Tizanidine. It's an antispasm medication. Mr. Crapo, aye. This is Gabapentin. Mr. Dashel. It's a uh, nerve pain medication. Aye. This is bupropion. Mr. DeWine. It's an antidepressant. Aye. This is omeprazole. Mr. Da. It's for morning nausea. Aye. And this is morphine. It's a narcotic. And uh, in this situation, the effect is not to get high, but to kill pain. And so I have to take more and more of it to stop the pain. You know, you see a guy who's paralyzed in a wheelchair, you think, oh, he's just in a wheelchair. You don't think about the, you know, stuff inside that, that's paralyzed. I can't cough because my stomach muscles are paralyzed, so I can't work up the, the full coughing uh, energy. I'm more susceptible to urinary tract infections and uh, 
there's a great big erection sidebar to this whole story. Hold the head of the penis between the thumb and the forefinger. One of the more delightful side effects of my situation is a uh, erectile dysfunction, ED. And uh, there are uh, several choices out there on the market available to a, a young man with uh, penis problems. And uh, we've tried uh, two or three of them, and they haven't really worked all that well for us. One that we haven't tried is uh, this thing called the uh, Caverject system, which uh, involves uh, a shot directly into your penis of some kind of magic medicine that will give you an erection. But it still involves a needle into a very sensitive area. Another way to try to uh, awaken the monster is the, uh, is the pump. It's kind of like a vacuum tube thing, and it, you, can, you can watch your penis get larger. But it's not the most romantic thing in the world to bring this big hunk of plastic and rubber into bed. The problem with the pump is that Thomas wears external catheters, which are basically like condoms. Um, and these are, it's like a condom with a tube on the end of it. And this is what he pees out of, and it goes into a bag. Um, to keep the condom on so that he doesn't have an accident and wet himself, there's a lot of adhesive used, which sometimes irritates the skin of the penis. Add to that the fact that he's on blood thinners because of a blood clot. And when you use the pump, you're forcing a lot of blood into the penis, which brings blood to the surface. And so his, the skin on his penis bleeds, which freaks him out. We cannot wait for the final proof, the smoking gun that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. When there is a smoking gun or a mushroom cloud, we have waited too long. We cannot wait for the smoking gun. A gun smokes only after it has been fired. The gun smokes only after it is fired. A gun smokes after it's been fired. That smoking gun would be a smoking city. And the smoke of a nuclear blast would mean that we are too late. Mr. Domenici. Aye. Mr. Dorgan. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. In, in the name of the people of this country, in the name of the young men and women whose lives may be put on the line. Mr. Ensign. Aye. Mr. Enzi. Aye. By the decision that this Senate will make is too weighty, is too far-reaching, and it's only fair to the people of America who are going to be asked to give in some instances, everything that they've got, everything they have, if, if a war ensues. And I tell you, my friends, I don't want that on my conscience. Not I. Over here to your left, you've got the National Cathedral on the top of the hill. You've got the Washington Monument coming up here on your left. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> my head. I need that nitroglycerin stuff. We went to the emergency room last week and they put him on clonidin and that didn't do any good, so they uh, put him on nitroglycerin gel. Yeah, just half an inch. The scary thing about it with the spinal cord injury is their blood pressure is so low anyway normally that his blood pressure will shoot up to like 200 over 140. And then if he takes clonidin or uses nitroglycerin, it can bottom out at like 70 over 36, just like that. It's going back up. It's okay. going. Stop. Stop. Up. Yeah, stop. Take it off. Take it off. Okay. Just one side. Just sit there. Stop. I'm just sliding it off. You just slide it back on. I speak for a man who gave for this land, took a bullet in the back for his pain, spilled his blood. In
He could have been there. Just, I mean, his picture could be there, just like that. And I could be going over to put flowers on his cross, you know? And instead, I'm here with him. That's, you know, it's just so, it's so overwhelming. It just really is overwhelming. I just can't. These are just pictures to so many people. They're not babies, they're not kids, they're not fathers and brothers and, and to see it in this chain of 2,000, you know, 2,000. And that doesn't even include the 14,000 that are injured and in wheelchairs and, oh, yeah. I had to have a cigarette first. Okay, I think I'm ready. Oh, no way. Hey, brother, welcome home. Thank you. Yeah, this is Dennis. He's a Vietnam vet, too. All right. Nice to meet you. Thank you for speaking out. You know, I understand it was the same for us. You can tell the truth, be granted a traitor, or you internalize and self-destruct. Yeah, I'm glad you're here, man. What happened to her? Shot underneath the collarbone. It severed my spinal cord, paralyzed from the chest down. Damn, sorry to hear that. Well, you're gonna have a sore ass the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when I, when I signed up, I was at Fort Hood, so I trained in the woods. <laughs> There's not woods and grass in Iraq. <laughs> I'm Kathy. I'm Thomas's mom. Oh, oh hi, I'm Kelly. Nice to meet you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Do you guys have someone? We were in Iraq. Oh, you were in Iraq. Oh, oh. I, I, wow. I'm... I noticed in Washington when we were there with the Gold Star Mothers for Peace and the MFSO, whose babies have not come home, whose husbands have not come home, I noticed them touching Thomas, kissing him, hugging him, wanting to be near him. And I think there was a connection there because he came home and their family members didn't. Families who watch their sons and daughters go to war only to never see them again 
and maybe even return with lifetime illnesses. We mustn't risk the lives of our sons and daughters or the lives of Iraqi civilians when we have no evidence that our country is in imminent danger. We ought to hear at least what the real reality is that the American people ought to understand, that the parents of those servicemen ought to understand what their children are going to be faced with. Mrs. Feinstein. Aye. Mr. Fitzgerald. Aye. Mr. Friss. Aye. Saddam Hussein is a homicidal dictator who is addicted to weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein is cruel, repressive, evil. Not since Hitler and not since Stalin have we seen so much evil. Saddam is a 20th century Adolf Hitler. I see the next Hitler in Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein possesses today an arsenal of weapons far, far more dangerous to the whole world than Hitler ever possessed. Mr. Graham of Texas. Aye. Mr. Grassley. Aye. Mr. Gregg. Aye. I tell people I like Top Gun way more than the average person. Oh, shit. I tell people that's my favorite movie. They're like, why? And I'm like, they got everything. Goose. Action. Iceman. Adventure. Comedy. Romance. Drama. Horror. The volleyball scene. The vo we reenacted the volleyball scene in Kosovo. We did it in <laughs> Iraq. Me and my buddy Tim, we were like, all right, let's flex and go real slow when we're serving the ball. We couldn't hit it over the net. Did you high five? Yeah. 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 Best movie ever made. Now I'm working for uh, Bobby Moeller, who you're about to meet. Bobby, he's a, he's a Vietnam vet. He was a Marine officer who was shot through the spine a lot like yourself. And uh, he's been in a wheelchair for almost 35 years. Bobby hey Moeller. Guys. How you I'm doing? This is, uh, this is Thomas Young. Hey, Thomas. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, man. I've heard quite a bit in the last couple of days about well, you. You've been hanging out with this bandito. So, uh, Did you go to the demonstration? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we marched. Uh, you know, you go to a parade, you go to a demo, wheelchairs up front. You know, standard routine. You put the gimps on the front end of the game because... <laughs> no, that's, Somebody that's, else who says gimps. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the visual. You know, they got to have the visual, you know? Mm -hmm. When you got shot, um, what was it like? All of a sudden, my body just went completely numb. I couldn't feel anything. I dropped my M16, I tried to pick it back up, but I couldn't move my hands. Where'd you get shot? Right uh, underneath the left collarbone. That's where I got shot. Bullet came here and went through the spinal cord as it went out. Mm -hmm. So we, we got, we got the, the angle and the trajectories were a little bit different, but we got and, very uh, similar things. Shortly after that, I was out for about a week. Woke up in uh, Walter Reed Army Hospital, and that was where they kind of started to do a little rehab with me. I had a a physical and an occupational therapist, they would come and they'd take me out of my bed and put me in this weird chair and just leave me there for two hours. That was my physical therapy at the very beginning. How long were you in the hospital? Uh, see, a week and a half in Germany, a month, about two and a half, three months, separated over different hospitals. That's, I was in the hospital for a year. And then, I went on an outpatient basis for another nine months. You got, you got short shrift, you know. I think I'm in better condition than you are. Oh, yeah. All right? Can you sit up easily enough? I can sit up easily enough, but it gets very painful to maintain an up position. Why? Where does it hurt? It hurts all the way. It hurts in my neck, and it radiates to my shoulders and upper back. It stops about the chest level where I'm paralyzed from. You need work, man. Oh, no, 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 you need work. I'm telling you flat out. Then I'm supposed to be doing a uh, sphincterotomy. Don't do that. Don't do that? What, what should I do? Because the urinary tract infections that I'm getting from all the... Because uh, I calf four times a day, and I really don't understand why it is I keep getting UTIs. Because you're calfing four times a day, that's why. Then what should I, what should I do about that? Because the sphincterotomy seems to be the only real solution. Yeah, and then you're going to lose the ability to have an erection. I've already lost. I don't have... I don't you don't, you don't, you don't have... Well, uh, now there's no reason why you can't wind up getting spastic erections, which... Oh, I, I you do know, get spastic erections. Yeah, well, cool. You know, you can, you can parlay that with some Viagra, with Caverjet, with all kinds of other things, and you can wind up, believe me, this is a separate conversation, you can be 
you're going to wind up being an ace because no normal guy can hang in there the length of time that you're going to be able to hang in there because the only way they're going to knock your dick down is with a sledgehammer, no. okay? That's the bottom line. <laughs> you know, I, you're not one of the hop and pop guys, I'm all right? I put him in the hop and pop category. <laughs> I, he gave me a prescription for Viagra initially, uh-huh. and that didn't work. That worked a couple times, and then it stopped. Yeah, pump up the volume. You use that in conjunction with the camera check. Again, I'm just going to say it. I think you got short shrift, man. You've seen the squandering of, you know, billions of dollars for bullshit war, destroying people. You get shot, and now they're going to skimp on giving you the kind of treatment and care that, you know, you obviously have a right to and, and, and deserve. I, I got to the point where I said, okay, here it is. If I don't fight this system, I will die. You got every right in the world to say, this is bullshit. You know, what are they going to do to you? What are they going to do to you? Mr. Hagel. Aye. Mr. Harkin. Aye. Mr. Hatch. Aye. Just trust the cherished principles on which we were founded. Put faith in freedom and raise your voices. Mr. Helms. And send this message to the world. Aye. The forces of freedom are on the march. Mr. Holland. And terrorists will find no safe harbor Aye. in this world. As James Madison wrote, in no part of the Constitution is more wisdom to be found than in the clause which confides the question of war or peace to the legislature and not to the executive department. Mr. Hutchinson of Arkansas. Aye. The trust and the temptation would be too great for any one man. Mrs. Hutchison of Texas, aye. That was James Madison. Mr. Inhofe. The trust and the temptation would be too great for any one man. Aye. We, the people. These are private meetings and they're meant to be private. We've got other film crews. This, this wasn't set up as a whole news availability. Set up as a private meeting. We're with Tom. Hmm? It's, it's his story. It's I know, but there's other film crews here as well. Yeah, but he's, is, in a, he's an Iraq war veteran who's come back paralyzed from the chest down, and this is his story. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Pardon the bluntness here, but I haven't seen a whole lot of action out of this mm-hmm. office. I understand frustration. Uh, anger if Senator Feinstein um, has not changed her position over the past year. I certainly understand and appreciate it. Meanwhile, in Iraq, things have gotten dramatically worse. Deaths have mounted, the violence continues. This office is not representative mm-hmm. of the will of the California people. The best that I can do is let you all know that she hears you and that I hear you and that her concern, that the concerns you have are passed on to her. We're not going to be quiet. Mm-hmm. We want every senator and House member on the Hill to know, (coughs) to be on notice that we are going to go home and we are going to start to get Mm love. I understand that people want her to say right now that this is the date I choose. She's not prepared to do that. She feels very strongly that such a setting, such a date uh, will not help the Iraqi people, uh, that Iraq could potentially fall deeper into chaos and civil war. And she is not going to support a timeline at this time. Thank you. There is another meeting that Thank you very much, Rick. Thank you. Saddam Hussein still has chemical and biological weapons. He has aflatoxin and he has ricin The Ebola virus. Smallpox virus. Smallpox has about a 30% mortality. Wheat cover smut, which can be used to poison crops. VX, sarin. Sarin, VX, Taven. You can put them in a bottle this small, he's got 22,500 gallons of anthrax. 100 tons of mustard gas. 200 tons of VX nerve gas. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Carey, Mr. Cole. Aye, aye, aye. Saddam is a world problem and should be addressed in the world arena. No nation should be above international law. The president has an obligation to go to the United Nations first. That is ridiculous. Quit idealizing the United Nations for what it is not. The atmosphere before a Security Council vote often resembles a Middle Eastern bazaar. When we're talking about the security of our people, I am not willing to delegate the responsibility of protecting them to the UN. 
Hi guys, I'm Kathy. This is my Thomas. This is when he went into Iraq and he was told he was going to go to school and he would see the world and he came home in a wheelchair. It bothers us to see not only how he's handling the war, but the problems we face don't seem to get through to them. They don't seem to care because they don't have any personal investment in the war. This is my son, Nathan. He deploys in November. He's going to Iraq. Each and every one of you is going to have to work hard if you want to try to bring about a change. We're still losing 500 every six, seven months, two a day still. I hope my fellow uh, soldiers are uh, starting to realize that uh, supporting President Bush is a little like uh, chickens voting for Colonel Sanders. We've also discovered through intelligence that Iraq has a growing fleet of manned and unmanned aerial vehicles. Unmanned aerial vehicles. Unmanned aerial vehicles. UAVs. Unmanned aerial vehicles. Small unmanned aerial vehicles. That is to say, model airplanes. That could be used to disperse chemical or biological weapons across broad areas. Capable of delivering chemical and biological warfare agents. Across broad areas. Over wide territories. Mr. Kyle. Aye. Ms. Landrew. Aye. Mr. Lieberman. Aye. Mrs. Lincoln. Aye. Mr. Lott. Aye. Are we ready for this trip? Sure. But I have to say goodbye to my dog. Hunter! Hunter, baby! Hunter, baby! Have a boy, come here. Thomas and I, we had a lot Hunter. in common. Calm down, Hunter. Calm down. Our upbringing affected us both, and that we came out very similar as far as attitudes on the world. We both moved around a lot. Our families moved quite a bit, and both of our mothers have been married a few times. Um, and are currently both very happily married. I got all Tommy's stuff loaded up, and I have Excellent. bottles of water. Some of them are frozen, so they can okay. pop them. Excellent. And snacky food. OK. Bye. All right, bye. I wonder what Nathan's going through right now before he gets ready to fly out. I think Nathan's probably ready to go, and he's strong. And doesn't have the same issues we have with all this. I can, I can urinate. I can push out urine, but I don't push it all out. A lot of it still stays in, stored in my bladder. And so the reason for the catheting is to insert a catheter into my penis to drain out that excess urine. Because if it's kept in there, it will crystallize and harden and play a part in a urinary tract infections. OK, what do I need to do? All right. I'm going to lift up, and you're going to sit that under me. OK. OK. So OK. Oh, this is this hard to do from this angle. Can you help me out here, Mom? Yeah. Must be hard to do. I mean, change those. OK, now. Uh, in this bag, you're going to take this lube out. OK. Instead of lubing up the end of that, yeah. you're going to lube the head of the penis. OK. Because it uses less lube. You're just going to lube right over the hole. Like that? And now, and now you're just going to insert the gap. And I really kind of wanted you to put the glove on the hand that was going to put the <laughs> catheter in. But OK. You seriously can push it in a little quicker than that one. <laughs> no, I can't. Are you nervous? Yeah. Oh. I've never done this before. OK. Is it coming out? Yeah, it's coming out. Oh. Hey, Juan, Juan. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. We generally tend to watch what goes on up there. <laughs> I'm trying to move it so it doesn't just go everywhere. Good, good plan. <laughs> I saw that that works swimmingly. <laughs> Look at that. You've got pee on your hand. You know what? It's not the first time I've had your pee on my hand.
these these 21, 22 year olds that are leaving, it's not even in their heads that they're going to come back dead. They don't even think about that. They're just going over to their shoot people and they're going to shoot everything that's in their way. And if they do that, a bullet's not going to hit them. You know, if they shoot the Iraqis first, those roadside bombs aren't going to blow them up. And that's the mentality that the army has to have and has to use to get these kids to go over there. I mean, this is all just a waste. I mean, what they're training for, because that's not what they're going to do. They're not going to repel off shit. There's nothing to repel off of over there. They're not going to drop out of helicopters, and it's not going to be all glamorous and shit. And it's so hard to be here getting ready to send Nathan off. And I mean, I want him to know how proud I am of him and how brave he is, but I don't want him to be brave. I don't want him to be a hero. I don't want, to think, I don't want him to think that I'm so proud of him because he's a hero. I'd be just as proud of him if he worked at Target and made $6 an hour. And it pisses me off that it has to be like this, that this has to be the way it is, for them to be brave and be honorable and, you know. This makes them better. This makes them dead. We were close as kids. The first day of school, when Grandma put us in Velcro shoes, <laughs> white socks, fluorescent, well, I had fluorescent shorts. You had dark black looking shorts. And we both wore stupid shirts. We picked those clothes out, though. Well, so okay, cute. regardless of the fact whether I picked out fluorescent shorts and a black t-shirt, <laughs> how are you going to let a fourth grader go, yeah, I think this matches? <laughs> now I guess we have these experiences that we share, and we've become closer again. Made your peace with God. Nathan has always, in every situation he's been in, thought he was 10 feet tall and bulletproof. I'm, I'm scared. I know what can happen. I know what, what can happen both physically and emotionally and mentally. And I couldn't let him see that because that was the time for him to have his mom cry and be scared over him. You got a phone card with you. Just call me every chance you get. Let me know you're safe. I'm all right. I couldn't let him, the guy that he looks up to so much, see that he was scared. Let me know what you need, and I'll send it. It's very scary having him go. And many people have suggested that I could get him out because Thomas has been injured, you know, and I could. Nathan could get out, but he doesn't want to. He wants to go. Come on, one more. One more. Uh, okay. There you go. OK. Both hands and everything. See you later, big bro. Uh, yeah, same here. Stay up. You'll be all right. That's right, be careful. What do you say? What? Be careful. Always in. That's right. I'm out of here. OK, my baby. I love you. Excuse me, everybody. Excuse me. Excuse us. Battery. Attention.
it'll be okay. You're sentencing thousands of Americans to sure death. You know that the president wants blood. He wants to go to war. That's why we're going through this. And so you are giving an inexperienced, desperate young man in the White House the execution lever to kill thousands of Americans. Some of you did that, and you can look at the 50,000 names on the wall down in the mall. Don't do it again. This resolution transfers the responsibility and the authority and the power of the Congress to the president so that he can declare war when if he wants to. This resolution gives over the power the people have given to us to the sole discretion of one man. We can save a lot of space. We can save a lot of paper. If we want to pass this nine-page document by cutting it down to one sentence, the president is authorized to use the armed services of the United States for as long as he wants, wherever he wants, in any manner he wants, without any approval by Congress, as long as he determines it is necessary to defend against a threat posed by Iraq in his own determination. That's all. Mr. Luger. Aye. Mr. McCain. Aye. Mr. McConnell. Aye. Mr. Miller. Aye. Mr. Murkowski. Aye. This is an abdication. Mr. Nelson of Florida. Of our responsibility. Here it is. Mr. Nelson of Nebraska. What a shame. Aye. What a rag. Aye. There are a lot of times that I uh, sit back there in the back, in my back bedroom, laying in bed, just uh, crying uh, with very little control. Usually happens after my uh, body does something to show how much it disagrees with me. Happens sometimes when I. watch people walk down the street. I'm jealous of people that can walk. I work at Air Cargo Load Masters. First thing I do is check my email. And the second thing I do um, almost every morning without fail is go to iCasualties.org and check and see if there's any new fatalities. Um, it's up to 2,400 now. And then I look and see who's died in the last day and make sure my baby's not on there. It has the Iraqi body count. 31,000 civilians have been killed since the beginning of this war. 31,000, a country that had nothing to do with September 11th. This morning, there's a picture on here from Time of um, the best photos of the year. This was done by Todd Heisler in the Rocky Mountain News. And the story is the night before the burial of her husband's body, Catherine Cathy refused to leave the casket, asking to sleep next to the body for the last time. The Marines made a bed for her, tucking in the sheets below the flag. Before she fell asleep, she opened her laptop computer and played songs that reminded her of Cat. And one of the Marines asked if she wanted them to continue standing watch as she slept. I think it would be kind of nice if you kept doing it, she said. I think that's what he would have wanted. This was his body being removed from the airplane. Now, that's the story that Bush doesn't, he doesn't want us to stop and think about this war like that. <laughs> Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> nope, no weapons over there. Maybe under here. <laughs> uh, 
I said to, to him the other day, George, if you really want to end tyranny in the world, you're going to have to stay up later. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am a desperate housewife. <laughs> They're so insulated. They don't want to know about people like Thomas. How you doing, buddy? And the four or five percent of the population that is actually sacrificing for this war. There are risks of action, but there are also risks of inaction. The risk of inaction is worse than the risk of action. Inaction is more costly than action. <laughs> there will be no action that we could possibly take that's going to get the support of people who will always find an excuse for doing nothing when it takes courage to step forward. If the Iraqi regime is able to produce, buy, or steal Mr. Nichols. an amount of highly enriched uranium a little larger than a single softball, Mr. Reed of Nevada, it could have a nuclear weapon in less than a year. Mr. Roberts. The estimates are publicly that it could have a nuclear weapon in less than a year. A nuclear weapon would take no longer than a few months to produce. A matter of months. Aye. 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 I plead with the American people, let your voice be heard. Mr. Rockefeller. Aye. Mr. Santorum. Aye. You need to be heard. You have a right to be heard. You have questions that should be asked and answered. Mr. Schumer. Aye. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Let the leadership of this Congress know that you don't want this resolution rammed through this Congress before the election. The life of your son may depend upon it. The life of your daughter may depend upon it. Get out there and let this leadership know. Mr. Shelby. Aye. Mr. Smith of New Hampshire. Aye. Mr. Smith of Oregon. Aye. Ms. Snow. Aye. Mr. Spector. Aye. Let the hills and the mountains and the valleys reverberate with the sound of your voices. It's your country. Stand for it now. People out there, speak out. Jamie, would you hold this one for me? Thank you. Sure. I'll get this one. Fantastic. How was your trip? Oh, it's been great. It's been good. good. You okay there, Bill, or you want to move them over a little bit? No, 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 that's working. I just don't think this war was necessary. So you don't feel that you're undermining our troops by saying what you're saying? Well, I have a brother who's over there right now. Oh? So it bothers me to think that people uh, I guess try to undermine my patriotism and whatnot when I have a brother who's over there that I really don't want to see anything bad happen to. Had you not been shot, paralyzed, is it conceivable, do you think, that you would have been speaking out against the war? I had friends who died unnecessarily mm -hmm. in this war, so I would still speak out. Although I probably wouldn't have as firm a leg to stand on or a chair to sit in. Thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you. Hey, Alex, what's up? It's uh, Thomas. Uh, we will be at the uh, Presbyterian Church, which is on uh, South Oxford, uh, out in Brooklyn. And uh, I've been told the thing starts at 7, so I'll talk to you later, man. Um, I think you missed a morphine somewhere, honey. This is Strike Watch 2005. No sign of an end to the transit strike anytime soon. It looks like it's going to be just as bad as it was yesterday. Interior avenues in Midtown right now is in torture mode. You got to Let's go down to Park Avenue. Central Park into Times Square. Of course, that will impact Broadway, too. About a half Sixth hour to go from one lake to another. Oh. About a half hour. It's unbelievable. We knew the thing would be late tonight, but we are waiting for uh, Thomas Young. So how long you served there? Uh, in Iraq, I was there for five days. And you got hurt right away. You got shot pretty quick, yeah. Jesus Christ. So thank you for being patient. Uh, the good news is that the Lafayette Inspirational Ensemble is in the house. Suicide bombers? Uh, no, I was in a truck and uh, just got caught by a, uh, an AK-47 round. Jesus Christ.
I support our troops overseas, definitely. I do too. I just want him to come home. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I I wasn't born here. I come from the former USSR, oh, okay. Soviet Union, and my parents brought me here when I was 13 years old. I came from a from a country called Georgia. Thank God that we ended up here because this is the greatest country in the world. There's no better country. Even though we don't have 100% democracy, I'd say about 50%. Here's the latest travel advisor. They are on Brooklyn soil. God damn it. Okay. Yeah, I'll be fine. I've seen the American people as a patient people. They uh, want to believe what they're told, especially when their leaders tell them. I'm trying to get the legs out. But even patience has a limit. Because the brakes had been taken off. And it's my sense that the American people have met that limit. Uh. And I'm going to ask you to greet our guest of honor tonight, Thomas Young. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I, uh, on the way down here, I was, I was kind of worried that I would be get here and I'd be speaking to an empty church. It took me so long. But uh, for the few minutes I got to hear this uh, wonderful choir behind me, well, it began to dawn on me that y'all would have been pretty good even if I hadn't showed up. You'll have to excuse me for a little bit. I get a little lightheaded every now and again. So, uh, hold on. I'd uh, also like to, that uh, during this speech, I may say the word uh a lot and stammer a little bit. So forgive me for sounding a bit presidential. <laughs> I called my recruiter on around September 13, 2001. Uh, when, if you all can remember, the uh, president stood on the rubble with the bullhorn and said we were going to get the evildoers that did this. And, oh, man, hold on a second. I'm starting to... Ah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, let's hope that's a little better. But uh, I, and he led the rah-rah around the country and got everybody really excited, and I was excited. And I uh, wanted to go to Afghanistan and get the people that did this to us. But uh, after I joined the Army, it became clear and clear to me that we weren't going to go to Afghanistan, that we were going to go to Iraq. And uh, more and more, it began to feel with uh, statements like George Bush saying that he uh, sought the approval of a higher father than his own and, and things like that. It really concerned me that uh, President Bush was trying to use uh, Jesus Christ uh, as an advocate for the war. But I always remembered, uh, at least from the Bible that I read, Jesus Christ was always about peaceful things and, and love and, and what, whatsoever you do unto the least of my brother, you do unto me. And... Uh, it just shocks me that a man who tries to live his life by such uh, devout Christian philosophies 
seems to skew so much on this one issue. I, I don't really... I have to excuse me again. Sorry, it's a little hard to regulate my body temperature, and it is hot up here. But uh, I, I heard somebody once say that the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. So just everybody uh, keep together and stay strong, and one day we'll get what we need to get done. And uh, thank you all for waiting, and I hope I uh, didn't disappoint. What is our post-Saddam strategy? In a country that has separatist desires by Kurds and Shiites, how long will we stay? How much will it cost? How will we pay for this? Are the estimates of $200 billion to prosecute this war the floor or the ceiling? We must focus on building our own economy before we worry about Iraq's economy after we invade Iraq. The Army's chief goal is to get you in, but once it comes time for you to get out, they don't really care if they take care of you or not. When I was shot in Iraq, I was also shot in the kneecap. And right now I have some large bullet fragments in my knee. And uh, they just recently discovered through a lead test that I have an elevated lead level of around 25 micrograms, which is about 10 off of being a dangerous issue. 35 micrograms is where you start hallucinating and having brain damage, and any number of things can happen from it. And it should have been done consistently. Again and again, he should have had regular blood tests. You know, we had to fight and fight and fight. Is there anything I can get for you? Something to drink or? No. I'm going to mark this as one of my red letter days in my calendar. This place affects my mood so negatively. Oh, I know. So why are they having you wait? Just to take your blood pressure, make to sure make you're stabilized? Sure to make sure the anesthesia doesn't kick back in, I guess, and I fall asleep while driving, which they told me not to do. You want me to go talk to them? I, I said, no, because you'll just try to make sense of it, and they'll go, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and you'll be like Charlie Brown, and you'll go, yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's right. This would be the PTSD kicking in that yes, you don't have, yeah. It's the PTSD that the psychiatrists say I don't have that right. apparently I have now. Yeah. Someone with PTSD will lash out at the people that they feel are safest. They can't lash out necessarily at a doctor or at a first sergeant that caused this. They can lash out at Bree or myself, you know, the family members. It's okay, because we'll still be there. We may get angry, we may, we may yell but he knows deep down that we're still there. Well, what I'm waiting for right now is for a doctor to come and tell me some aftercare instructions. Like, I mean, when I got my tattoo or my piercing, they told me what to do afterwards to help take care of it. I haven't heard word one here. I do a lot of nursing care for Thomas, and I've heard a lot of people say that that can get in the way of your intimacy. I'm cleaning out his puke pan. He gets nauseous a lot, especially in the mornings. When we are fighting, he will sometimes get angry and say we're basically roommates, and that I'm, you know, his housekeeper and his maid. I could count on my hand, one hand, how many times we've had sex. And then. Obviously, when you're spending a lot of time in bed and you can't easily get up and go get things, you have a lot of things at hand. You have your magazines and books and CDs. But he puts everything right down the middle of the bed and physically builds a wall between us. During the war, we lost 139 troops. Since the war ended in May of 03, I think, we have lost 2,160 troops since the war ended.
we have now become a nation of imperialists. You know, we're going to be at war forever. That's crap, baby. Why is that crap? We want peace. That's why we're there. Keep terrorism at bay rather than right here in Kansas City. It's kind of nice that we've opened up this pocket in Iraq that all the insurgents can come into and we can fight them there because they weren't there before. Some worry that a change of leadership in Iraq could create instability and make the situation worse. The situation could hardly get worse. A unilateral war in Iraq could lead to an increase in anti-American extremism throughout the Muslim world. And it will bring to their cause tens of thousands of new recruits. There is no victory in the destruction of one tyrant while breeding 10,000 terrorists. President Bush makes this truly presidential decision out of his gut. History will read that the nations who stood together and stopped Saddam Hussein saved the world. Mr. Stevens. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Mr. Thompson. Aye. Mr. Thurman. Aye. A message from the House of Representatives. Mr. President. Mr. Clerk. I am directed by the House of Representatives to inform the Senate that the House has passed House Joint Resolution 114 to authorize the use of United States Armed Forces against Iraq, in which the concurrence of the Senate is requested. The message will be received. What do you need? You're right. That's all you said. You called me. What okay. do you want? Okay. We're going to stop talking to each other. working in a comedy club, waiting tables. I really like it. It's one of my favorite jobs I think I've had. Thomas and I are around each other a lot, so that kind of works on each other's nerves. My life can teach people anything. It's do not make impetuous decisions. Decisions on whether to invade a country or enlist in the military or anything. Don't rush into the future. Well, I'm in my new apartment, my one room studio, small apartment. What he told me was that he wanted to end it before we started hating each other. We got to the point where we would start talking and slowly the conversation would turn into a bicker. And it just, we tried going to uh, therapy together that didn't really work out that great. We fought over everything. I don't know. Me going out with friends, um, I, I mean, I was out of the house a lot more than he. I had a job, and 
would go out with friends after work sometimes. One of the big hurdles that uh, kept me from uh, asking for the separation sooner was because I was worried that I wouldn't be able to function as well on my own from actually getting food for myself. Oh, my meatloaf's still in there. I haven't, I'm not cooking yet. I'm still a nuclear chef. You want to film my fridge? That's, 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 what do we want, MTV Cribs now? I don't really understand why they give you an award for getting shot, but they do, and that's what that is. My uh, wife liked to have these kind of things up on display, like this uh, machine autographed certificate of appreciation from our president. I already know I got shot. I have an everyday reminder of it. I don't need to come out here to my living room and see a flag and a purple heart to tell me what situation I'm in. Bam, bam. Here's what you get on M16 and a Kevlar vest. You might come home with one less leg, but this thing will surely keep a bullet at your chest. So come on, come on, sign up, come on. This one's nothing like Vietnam, except for the bullets, except for the bombs, except for the you that Ready? I was paralyzed in a wreck, and I came home to find Jim Talent opposes the stem cell research that could help me walk again. I'm Claire McCaskill, and I approve this message. Mr. Torricelli. Aye. Mr. Voinovich. Aye. Mr. Warner. Aye. The eyes are 77. The nays are 23. The joint resolution is passed. This will be a blot on the Congress and the Chief Executive of the United States forever for having cast a political vote to send our men and women to war and to possible death in a country that never attacked us, a country that never invaded us, a country that did not, I say did not then and does not now constitute a threat to my country. Absolutely. I've been in this Senate now I'm in my 48th year. I've cast over 17,000 roll call votes. Wow. In this 48 years. And that was the most important vote I have ever cast. I stood and 22 other senators stood with me. No, we will not turn this power to declare war, which the Constitution says Congress shall have the power to declare war. Article 1? Absolutely. Section 8. So that was no problem to me. I stood with the Constitution. I'm proud of it. And there were 23 of us. The immortal 23. <laughs> I often refer to it in that way. And let me show you that vote. I want to put that one out here, so I won't have to reach back there to get it. And I'm going to read you the names of these. The Immortal 23? The Immortal 23. All right, here we are. H.J. Res 114. That's the resolution. Senators voting in the negative. Here are the 23. Akaka. Mr. Akaka, no. Bingaman. Mr. Bingaman, no. Boxer. Mrs. Boxer, no. Bird, B-Y-R-D, right there. Mr. Bird, no. Chafee, Republican. He's a good man. Mr. Chafee, no. He stood with us. Conrad. Mr. Conrad. No. What's that one? Uh, it like John Corzine. Corzine, yes. Mr. Corzine, no. Well, I don't have my glasses on. What's that one there? That uh, Dayton? Dayton, yeah. 
God bless him. He's leaving us after this year. Mr. Dayton, no. Who's that? That's uh, Senator Durbin. Durbin? This one? Senator Feingold. Feingold? Uh, that'd be uh, Bob Graham from Florida, I think, Senator. Yes, it would be. Mr. Durbin, no. Mr. Feingold, no. Mr. Graham of Florida, no. We go all the way down here to Daniel Inouye. Mr. Inouye. Yeah, there's a man who has really sacrificed. He gave his arm. From Hawaii, yeah. No. Yes, sir. He's a real hero. It's another one of my heroes. Jim Jeffords. Senator bad. Jeffords, the, yeah, the one that switched sides of the aisle. He's one of my heroes, too. Mr. Jeffords, no. Kennedy, Leahy and Levin. Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Levin, no, no, no. Mikulski? Ms. Mikulski, no. Murray? Mrs. Murray. Patty Murray? No. Reed from Rhode Island? Sarbanes? Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, no. Mr. Sarbanes, no. Stabenow? Yeah, Debbie Stabenow. Ms. Stabenow, no. Wellstone, that's the man who gave his life shortly thereafter. And then Wyden. And Wyden, he's still here. Mr. Wellstone, no. Mr. Wyden, no. 23, seven to seven to 23, the, Im the immortal 23. Our founders would be so proud. Thank you for your service. Man, you've made a great sacrifice. You served your country well. As of you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I like it better this way. All right. You see, we both got some mobility issues. <laughs> yes. I had read uh, a few months ago that your wife had passed. I'm very sorry to hear Yes, you. my darling passed. Bless her heart. She's an angel right now. She's an angel. Oh, yeah. Where do you go next now? I, I don't know. I'm not in charge of my day. That's the way I feel sometimes. I'm not in charge of mine. Point where 